So um, I just entered the, the meeting now um, to say a few words that happened to me and my story uh, of staying in Gaza. And I will read it uh, for you. Um, on the morning of October 7th, I was at a Nova festival, a place that gave us the opportunity to celebrate life. I had a jewelry stand there and I, made, I, I came there to make my dream come true. On that morning at 6.29, my dream turned into a nightmare. Hamas terrorists violated the most peaceful and joyful place and turned it into a bloodshed. Uh, it was completely chaos everywhere. Everywhere you can see people screaming and running desperately to save their lives. I tried to escape and save my life, but I was caught. I was caught three times. I managed to escape twice, but in the third time I broke my leg and they caught me. Um, they put me in a car and took me into Gaza. They beat me up on the way to Gaza. Um, On the way to Gaza, I was beaten and thought my life is ending. And I prayed that I will die fast and without suffering. I was terrifying. I was taken to a very small room, me and an 18 years old girl, alone with four Hamas terrorists. Now imagine four men, with two girls, watching you every day, every night. Every minute, you can go to sleep without them looking at you. You can breathe without them looking at you. It's constantly thinking that you're going to be raped. Um, and we were not allowed to speak to each other. That's why I'm telling you that being held captive in Gaza is an insane experience of continuous panic attacks, a nightmare. Every day leaves a scar on the soul. There were many, there was few days, some that I will never forget. The one day we played cards and even laughed, but in a fracture of a moment, everything turned upside down. One of the terrorists got mad at me and pointed his gun to my head. He didn't fire, but I thought I'm gonna lose my life that night. Um, Every day was unexpected. Just a second. The next day, the hunger and the despair were so great. It was unbearable and I wanted to cry, but it was forbidden to cry. I couldn't hold it back. So I banged my head against the wall and the terrorists came into the room he saw me doing it, he beat me up and he took my foot away. But every day was like that. Every day was unexpected, like I said before. Um, there was a day that I was very, very sick. And I have to say that in that moment, they even um, used the situation to, to do whatever they want. I had high fever and I kept vomiting at all time with no medicine, without water. I was hallucinating at one point, but they didn't care and they didn't treat me. And I lost hope. Um, and the day the noise from the bombing stopped and the ceasefire began, they moved us and I, hope, and I hoped I, I was going to be released. But then I felt a slight pull on my shirt and heard the Hamas terrorists saying, not you, Stella, not now. For them, it was a cruel game, a psychological game that they like to play, another way to break your mind. Then they took me into a terrifying and abandoned house. I'm, I'm sorry, just a second.
I'm sorry. They took me to, they took me to a terrifying and abandoned house, dark house. I was there by myself with more than 10 terrorists. They told me you will never leave Gaza and you will stay here forever. Where is your army? Nobody's looking for you. Every such day leaves a scar. And there were many days like this that makes many, many scars. On October 7th, I was abducted from the Nova Festival. In that moment, I lost everything. Control over my life, my freedom, my identity, my very self, even my private name. We cannot accept the possibility of being kidnapped from a music festival and being held captive. We cannot let it end like this. If not everyone returns, everyone in the world should be feared going into festivals because no one is safe. I met some of the people who are still there and I promised them. I promised that I will do everything in my power to bring them back. I promised. But instead, I got horrific news or news last week that one of my friends that was with me there was murdered. And it took my breath away. It broke my heart. They don't have time. And what happens in the world has a huge impact on the daily lives of the captive. The terrorists, they watch TV. When they are angry, it's taken on the captives. When they are released, there is a moment to breathe. What happened in the world has a tremendous impact. And therefore, the world, us, and you, you have a responsibility and we have a responsibility and i believe that everything we need to do now and everyone needs to do it now is to press as hard as we can on any person any person that has two years to press as hard as we can to make sure that everybody will tell our story everywhere they can and help in every in every way they, that it's possible to help us, because they literally the 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 sentence they they don't have time. That's beyond. We are beyond the red line. We are beyond everything. So many so many things that happened to them could have been. They could have been alive now if this ceasefire and stopping the Hamas could have happened that Itai could have been home now and Itai is dead. And I I am so scared and I'm so fear of my friends in there that I just want that my miracle that happened to me will happen to them too. And, and that's the only possibility that I have in my mind because they have to come back home safely and quickly as fast as possible. Every day that goes by there, the girls that are being raped, are being abused. The injuries are getting so much worse. Even, even the guys, they're not safe. Nobody is safe there. In every moment, I cannot even explain the amount of bombing. I came back to the country with, a, with an injury in my leg and I lost half of my hearing. And the psychology abuse that they are using on you on daily basis from morning till night is so strong that not everybody has the tools to deal with that situation. Therefore, I think that we don't, it's beyond we don't have time. It's beyond that going to tweet it. It's now to go and scream it out, to shout it out, to spread it all over you can. Either people would think it's too much or not too much. There is not too much. And everything is, um, I just believe that everybody can do something. It's not, there is no possibility that everybody can do something. That's, that was my story. And I wish that my story will stay my story and that they don't have that story to tell. That they will come back and say, it was okay. 
and we are home now and we're safe and and that that's what that that's that's what needs to be happening now there are babies in there there are now we know that she she's dead but when i was released she was still alive uh, josie 73 year old woman um as far as we know and now she's she's not alive anymore and i'm afraid on the girl 17 women that are still there the men that are still there and i ask you to go and spread it out and make sure that everybody is listening to you. And, and that's me, that's my story. And if you have questions, I'm here to answer. If there is any question, Moran, first of all, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Uh, because we know and we see how much is difficult. You are in a mission, but it's we see how much is difficult to tell the story probably once and once again. I can tell you that Moran, part of Moran's testimony is also on the on the website with the English subtitles. Uh, so really, thank you very much. We sending our hugs and, and strength and really appreciate that you made the these efforts for us. Uh, if there is any question, we will open, uh, uh, we'll open the mute. Uh, uh, they're, they're sending you, Moran, you are so brave. Uh, and thank you for sharing. You have a lot of thank yous in the, in the chat. Yeah, I can see that. Thank you so much for okay. that. There was one question. There. there was one. There was question. Yeah. Yeah. There are questions. I'm here to answer. Okay. While you while while you're asking the questions, maybe I should. I don't know if you know the conditions of the people that that are there. The con the conditions are so difficult and so hard. I'm a skinny person, and I lost in two months eight kilo. I I came back to the country half a person. Um, thinking about the girls that are still there, keeping losing weight, and the hygiene is so hor horrible. This is a situation that you literally can die from any disease, any disease that you will get. And it's really, really easy to get infected in that situation. So it's not only the the safety of the captives, it's the medical situation, which is really, really horrible right now. Because I know that we heard testimonies about the injuries of some of the people in there that are getting really worse. And just to think about, um, to think about them sitting there, need to be dealing with bullet injuries, with um, body parts that they don't have anymore. And that we know that they don't have those body parts anymore that it's not it's not even i cannot even imagine that situation with another question did i get a sense of day and night uh, oh sorry about life they don't care about they, they say they they care about their lives but you know, I came to one of them and I told him, you know, there is not possibility that you will wake up happy if you are waking up with a war inside your heart. There is no situation that a person that gets up in the morning with so much hatred for any other person. It's not only Jewish people, they even say it, who is Christian or Jewish or Buddhist or whatever, they all should go to the fire. There is only place to a Muslim people in here. That's that's the thing that they keep t saying it all over and all over again. Two of the two of the terrorists that guard me at the beginning, they said that they used to uh, point on their heart and say, we don't have emotions. We're emotions free. That's the situation that they they like to live like this because this is a default situation in their head. Life of Gaza, life in Gaza. 
and, and like I said to him, and like I said before, there is not possibility to peace and there is not possibility to be happier or to get better uh, reaction if you wake up with such hatred in your heart. Um, that's what I got from them. And I'm a people lover. I'm half, I'm, I'm, I'm Buddhist. I'm, uh, I'm loving God. Uh, I'm loving people. Uh, for me, everybody is one and one is everybody. Um, and and that's what, that's their mantra. Uh, one, there, is, there is one more question I saw. Can you see it? And that's what will the last one that we'll take. What do you think they care about? Uh, it's really hard to answer that because I'm sure as a, a human being, they care about the, their children or I want to believe that they care about their families and friends' lives. Obviously, they put them in danger because in the house that I was at, there was a rocket, uh, um, a fire rocket all on the rooftop. There were babies in the house. They didn't care. It's their babies. Um, eventually they told me that they, that baby died in the bombing. Um, and when I looked at him and I cried because I, I knew the baby, um, he told me that's okay. That's what that's what happens in here. And I told him that's not that's completely not okay. That, that's completely not fine. That you put in danger your own baby. Um, but that's what that that I, I don't think that they hate they hate their children or they hate their families. I do believe they love their people. I just I believe that they are so brainwashed. Uh, they don't see it. They don't see the situation right. Um, I don't think that only politician can affect the situation. I do think that if you have connection to people that have connection, to people that have connection, that somebody will reach to a person that knows somebody that will come to speak in their ears. Because we're, we're, look, we're looking now and searching for an influence from outside that will press them from the inside to stop it, to stop that war. Because if they had a mission on the set, on October 7th to come and conquer something, that mission is lost. If they had a mission to release the 10,000 people that they have, that's already lost. They don't have the power to stop it, to even stop it because they don't. They were not organized to that situation. Uh, people need to understand that, and uh, not medical wise, not security wise. Um, they don't even know where the people are. I asked them several times, "Where are the babies?" They don't know where are the babies. We asked them if they if there are still women. Why are the men are released be, 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 instead of the women? And they say they don't say it but they do say it under the nose that they don't know where are they. They don't have the option to reach to them and to take them out. And I know, and that's my biggest fear, that in the, in the Arab culture, if you abuse a woman and they're not married, they are both dead. I know that. And that's how I kept on myself. And every time and each time that I move to a new place and move to a new place, the first question they ask you, is how was your staying in the last house? And I, I keep saying that everything was okay. I never exposed no, nothing that they did to me because I knew how it worked, how it works in the in the Arabic culture. And that's why I'm more afraid on the girls now because it's known that they are being abused. They have to be taken out now. It's, it's not even the now, they don't have the time because if somebody will find out they were abused, they will probably will be killed. Yeah. Sorry. Difficult to speak after you. Yeah. Thank you very much. That, that's difficult to breathe. Yeah. Difficult to breathe. So, Moran, again, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for so willing much. to to share 
and to, you know, to go over and over again those uh, horrible things. Uh, again, sending our hugs and strength. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And please, please go and spread the word as much as you can. You, everybody can do something. And thank you so much for your time.